amount of information we got, this video is going to be doubling as a review and a discussion video. So I encourage you to watch it to the end and discuss your thoughts with me in the comments below. Now, it wouldn't be a discussion with only my thoughts, would it? Either way, we got a huge backstory this month. So before I go into it, let me just say, for those of us that predicted Zeke as Grisha's son, bravo. Now, as for the opposition, you know, based on Grisha's eyes being dark and not being dark previously, well, they sure seem dark this whole chapter. And again, with his history, it's, it's not really... Maybe it was just an uh, artistic motif. E either way, you know, Grisha is a descendant of a race of people called the Eldians. And these Eldians conquered an ancient kingdom called Marley. And then, phew, it gets worse from there. They start an ethnic cleansing using the power of not only the Titans, but nine Titans to be specific. Titans supposedly made up from nine pieces of the souls of an ancestor named Ymir. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Does it mean it's our Ymir? We don't know. We just don't know yet. And I'm not going to make any speculations. But Fast forward approximately 1700 years... And the Marleans staged a civil war, forcing the Eldian ruler, King Fritz, probably connected to the race family if I didn't know any better, to flee to the wonderful island called Paradis. Mm, sounds like paradise. But Paradis, aka the walls, is where our story is. So. Now we know the origin of the walls and the true purpose behind them. To keep out the Marlan army. Now would a wall keep the mountain hot entirely? No. But the last time they heard from King Fritz was when he said that if they break the wall, millions of titans, the titans that make it up, would trample the earth. Which is pretty bad actually, no matter how you think about it. That's... That's the apocalypse right there. It's kind of funny considering the world we thought was set in looked to be post-apocalyptic in a way to begin with, but nope. It's more like post-World War II meets Renaissance gone wrong. Either way, after the demise of Grisha's sister, he, he was scouted by the Eldian Restoration Movement. I'm just going to call that the ERM for short. And all of this finally shines light on Grisha's actions as well as Zeke's. Because through that, through the ERM, Grisha met his first wife, Dinah Fritz. I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm just going to say Dinah. It's four letters, it can't be that bad. And Dinah is a, you know, royal leftover after the rest fled to Paradis. And after the Marleyan government announced their plan to send Endian ch Eldian children with the power of the nine, pa of, eh, nine Titans to Paradis to recapture the coordinate from King Fritz, or as we know, the race family, and bring it back under the uh, you know, impression that King Fritz was going to, you know, have his revolution, which obviously doesn't happen. I'm not sure who this King Fritz was, but his memory sure as hell live on the coordinates. That's one thing that's for sure. So technically, King Fritz is around in Aaron's mind at the moment. But either way, after they announced their plan, it was then that Grisha nominated his own son, Zeke, to be a mole for them. But that seven-year-old was a little bit more spiteful than we thought and decided to turn his family in. So, all of the ERM were turned into mindless titans. Probably including Grisha. Why do you say including? Well, he didn't end up at the walls on, you know, on his own. 
So my speculation, not a theory or anything, a speculation is that he actually was a mindless titan with the rest of them and by sheer luck alone consumed one of the other shifters sent by the Marleyan government. Probably like a first, you know, round of sending out them. Because think about it, between the uh, timeline of them announcing their between announcing their plan to send the children in think about it. Zeke was seven now he's definitely not seven and now there are actual teenagers being the other Titan shifters being Annie Rainer Bolt Bertolt and Marcel that just makes up five of them if you include Zeke or the other four. Maybe there aren't another four. Maybe the other four Titans were lost. Or, worst case scenario, we haven't seen them yet. But, like I said, it could be that they already failed and this is just a second attempt. But, we don't know. But, like I said, the age gap between Zeke and the others is a, you know, an indicator of that possibility. Plus, the pressure of earning honorary citizenship and finally being removed from the oppression of the uh, Marleyan army, I can see why Raynor and the others are so driven. But either way... Actually, someone commented on the last discussion that the smiling titan that ate Carla and Hanes was Dinah. Now, at uh, first I dismissed this, as I sadly always do. Or, not anymore, at least I won't. Because, after reading the manga stream translation this morning, and looking at Dinah's face after Zeke turned her in, I realized, holy shit, it really does look like the Smiling Titan. And then I flipped back a bit, and looked at the rest of the ERM, and believe it or not, I actually found two faces that remind me of specific titans that we saw during the Tross District arc. On page 41, on the bottom, there's a titan whose face looks exactly like the very impressionable titan that ate Mina, who was one of the people who was eaten by, you know, in, back in Trost. And the second face, even more noticeable, was the uh, Santa Claus-like one that attempted to eat Armin and ended up swallowing Aaron whole. I mean, minus the arm and the already eaten leg. <laughs> but, you know, in other words, the ERM, or members of them, potentially make up Titans that we've already seen throughout the story. Plus, after looking back, I realized more connections that, looking back at Chapter 71, Grisha definitely had more memory than he let on to. Because a lot of the things he said to Keith make a lot more sense under the context of what we saw in this chapter. A lot of it. Like, a lot, a lot. Even the uh, concept of money. Because according to Davin408 again, thank you, Davin, it looks like it was more of a communist kind of thing. They just did their work and they got their, you know, portion of food. So, yeah, it looked similar in terms of how he was really hiding his memories. Now, I'm guessing that if he did have his memories, he, he used amnesia as a farce in order to keep under the race family's radar so that when he was finally ready, he could attack them without notice and just retrieve the coordinate, which he absolutely did. On top of that, it's also possible that Zeke has another agenda. You say, why? Well, it's simple. What does Zeke have that Aaron doesn't? Now, they both have their father's blood, but their mothers are different. And what is Zeke's mother? A royal. And what makes the coordinate come out to its full potential? Royals. And speaking of the coordinate and it in being in the hands of royals, there was one other thing I almost forgot to mention. I didn't even not you know, write down in my notes but do you guys remember one big thing about the truth of the world that was given 
throughout alongside the Titan powers that made every single recipient extremely passive about what they did with their power. Well, now we have a little inkling of what that truth might be. That truth might be the whole finished war. As for what their, how, which part of that truth makes it impossible for them to want to, you know, fight is beyond me. But either way, something about what we learned in the last chapter is what hindered the race family from taking any sort of action. Maybe it's what King Fritz wanted, to just stay inside the walls, and then his memories took that and prevented anyone else who might have thought different from, you know, leaving the walls, or having the entire civilization leave the walls. On top of that, there was a lot of World War II vibes, as well as an Industrial Revolution vibe, I noticed. But that's all I have for today. There were so many answered questions this time, and so many new ones as well. So I want to hear your thoughts and questions. What other theories do you have? Because I want to know them. I want to see them, I want to look into them, and we'll discuss them together in other videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as the previous discussion. Well, this is more of a review and a discussion. And don't forget to leave the video a like, or a dislike if you're feeling some type of way. Or you just didn't like how I paused at certain points. It doesn't fucking matter. Either way, click that subscribe button. And not just join the channel, but this community. I know, a little pretentious. But still, I'd like to think of it as a community. And let's discuss all of these amazing things together. Okay, that sounded extremely cheesy. Either way, check out the previous discussion beyond the walls if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. Until then, follow me on Twitter at Smalls94BK so you know when I'm dropping a discussion beforehand. Smalls, out.